Namaste, beautiful yogis. I am back with another quick video. Hopefully, I wanted to talk about something that often comes up around yoga. Women in general are concerned with it cellulite. And cellulite, uh, and uh, something weird that I've discovered that reduces it. Of course, I think the best thing for cellulite is movement and yoga and a diet free of um, toxic stuff. Um, by toxic stuff, think about hydrogenated fat, excess um, um, fats, but you, it, it depends on the variety of fats, of course. Uh, some fats are fine and some are not. And um, But um, trans fats, those are a biggie. Um, uh, movement would, and circulation, improving circulation would be very important. Certain teas, certain herbs, etc. would help with circulation, moving toxicity out of the body and so forth. Of course, dry brushing and all of that. Now, I'm not good about dry brushing. I'll tell you that things like that, it's taken me years to learn to just do a uh, new face for my face and things like that. So um, dry brushing is not big on my schedule. I do have the brush, but it's not something I can commit to. Uh, I've noticed recently, however, that my cellulite is greatly reduced, like greatly. We're talking like I don't see it in places where I used to see it. That doesn't mean it is gone. I don't expect it to ever be gone. I am of Eastern European descent. I think it's based on uh, genetics and estrogen levels, diet and other factors. And women in general are prone to having it anyways, regardless of it depends on that, but it's not gonna uh, delete it completely. Uh, you know what I mean. So that is a disclaimer. I don't think it's completely gone, but it is greatly reduced by a large percentage. So I was thinking I have not done different exercise. I have not lost weight. Usually losing weight makes it appear less, which is why I um, sometimes don't feel very comfortable. When you gain weight, you feel real weird in different areas like the stomach and the, mostly the belly but then also more cellulite it just the body seems a little less to to work less optimally is uh, what I want to say the digestion usually is off etc so it snowballs maybe more toxicity accumulates because the digestion is worse and so forth and that affects the sleep the hormones it's a it's a massive effect so we're always looking for that balance that sweet spot where we're doing just enough not too much not too little etc so i was thinking what have i done differently to have my cell light um, be so greatly diminished and the only thing i can think of and i think it's uh, probably uh, why it's decreased is i went on a potato diet i spoke about it in a previous video I didn't mean to, potatoes have been in my diet for the last few years, but not a lot of potatoes, not often, just a few potatoes if I eat them. They weren't like a big part of my diet, but they had made a return. I also fell into the whole anti-potato, anti-white starch uh, movement. I kind of uh, bought into it and I thought that raw is better and starch is not as healing which i still think raw in summer is very important fruit is absolutely the most majestic food you can ever have it's absolute earth's um genius perfection and absolute gift to us but potatoes i personally didn't know about their amazingness for quite a while Anyway, so Johnny decided to go on a potato diet because it's known to help you with losing weight. I'll tell you why uh, some signs that I kind of googled, <laughs> kind of found, because I'm trying to find an explanation as to why they have the effect that they have. And he wanted to go on a potato diet because you do lose weight on potatoes. That is just a, a thing. And he fell off the diet after a few weeks, but because I was cooking a pot of potatoes every night, I kind of got used to that uh, routine of eating the potatoes that I've cooked uh, in the middle of the day when it comes time to dinner. And I just eat, really, I just eat one meal a day. And that's been for years. I get, I, I can pack in calories quickly just to get what I need. Uh, but um, I uh, just continued with his diet. It's been a few months. I mean, I don't know how many months I should ask him. It's been two months minimum. I think three months. It could be more. I've been eating just... 
literally 90% of my calories are coming from potatoes and the rest is fruit and cabbage mostly. So, um, so I noticed that first of all, uh, it doesn't matter how many calories I eat and how many uh, massive potatoes I eat, uh, I, I do eat a lot, um, I don't get weight. It just, it kind of sits around exactly where I feel comfortable, not too skinny, not too, you know, the balance place. And then I would be very curious, that would be for a future video to do my blood test because I feel that my cholesterol would be lower. Uh, but I do feel that um, they can help with your uh, blood um, uh, uh, blood work because they're so high in nutrients and in iron and in everything you just you really are not gonna run into a lot of any really nutritional uh, deficiencies if you just eat mostly potatoes and supplement them with grains and some seeds and you know the drill how to make a, a, a good well balanced uh, meal anyway so I googled potatoes and cellulite because that's not something I've googled before and Mostly the first articles that come up are potatoes cause cellulite, avoid potatoes, you're going to get cellulite and you know, that's the same as fruit. Fruit is going to cause weight gain. You will never in your entire life see a fat fruitarian or someone that eats a lot of fruit, regardless of calories, they're just thin people. I've eaten a mass amount of dates, you just, it's not, they keep you where you need to be. They give you energy anyway so potatoes for me are a little bit of a surprise i'm more of a fruit girl so i i googled to find a pdf of it's called um and this is from the usda.gov uh, website i'll try to link it it's a pdf on the chemistry of potatoes and it goes over what it, uh, they have glycoalkaloids is one of the solanin alkaloids in them that can be poisonous in large amounts but in small amounts they're known to lower cholesterol to have anti-cancer uh, capacity there is a study on again on a very reputable website on eggplant because eggplants are in the nightshade family and they have also solanin alkaloids and um, they've been studied for um for their effect on cancer they they can potentially have uh, anti-carcinogenic mechanism and the article is called chemistry and anti-carcinogenic mechanism of glycoalkaloids produced by eggplants potatoes and tomatoes so that's an interesting article and it's based on eggplants which are in the family of tomatoes nightshades of uh, potatoes or nightshades and then when you read that text on the usda.gov website, it explains that glycoalkaloids, besides toxic in large amounts, are, could be very beneficial in small amounts. That's how herbs work. If you were to eat an herb as a staple, which you can't really, you could get poisoned by excess of a certain um, phytonutrient in it or chemical compound in it but in small amounts they have therapeutic effects now with potatoes think about it the peel is made to last forever it has quite a bit of protective antifungal antibacterial properties in this particular article i really highly recommend you to read it even though it's a kind of long pdf it explains that potatoes still have a lot of the genome of the wild potato plant in it unlike many cultivated other fruits and vegetables and they're strongly antifungal, antibacterial, anti... Um, now uh, the medical medium considers them strongly antiviral, they have really high lysine content which is good in the vegan world and all of those things are wonderful, they have really high uh, folic acid content, really phosphorus, magnesium, uh, zinc, they're just excellent but when I continue scrolling down, hold on, so this is how the PDF works and when I continued scrolling down this article, I come across, the, I wanted, I scrolled all the way down, I read everything kind of like some things I skipped, like the minerals I skipped because we know zinc and copper that I, I knew about and that can be easily found in other articles, but I wanted to scroll down to phenols. Uh, antioxidants, the so-called antioxidants, and wanted to see the exact phenols they have. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a scientist, I'm just interested in it, but I'm sure you can find a lot more studies on this, or if you're a scientist, you can delve deeper. This is just an interesting observation. 
So one of the main phenols in potatoes are chlorogenic acid. I've heard it many times, it's CGA. You can buy it as a supplement. So I immediately typed chlorogenic acid and found an article on Where was it? Hold on one second. Oh, so, and I found an article on chlorogenic acid, acid mechanism of action of the supplement because it is studied. It is studied. You can buy it as a supplement. It's something that you can get uh, in supplement form. Now, it has so many effects on the human body. Now, it keeps, the interesting thing is it lowers body fat content by reducing levels of triglycerides, LDL, cholesterol, and VLDL preventing the absorption and production of fats while increasing their breakdown by stimulating beta oxidation. That's amongst many benefits that are listed here in this article. Activating the GABA receptors by binding to the benzodiazepine site, resulting in reduced levels of anxiety, inhibiting 11 okay chemical stuff an enzyme involved in making hormones that raises blood pressure so they're known to lower blood pressure to there is and that's about the um, acid actually the cga um improving the survival of dopamine producing brain cells through the uh, inhibition of macro glial activation and so forth so um Propon so basically what it's used for is antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activity, lowers blood pressure, may control blood sugar levels, may help lose weight, and potatoes actually are known to control blood, uh, blood sugar levels, improve move and cognitive function, function, may help with bacterial infection. So that's just about the acid, the chlorogenic acid, not the potatoes. Potatoes obviously have other things in them, but this is a very powerful, but this is a very powerful uh, component in them. They also have caffeic acid, the, um, one of the antioxidants that uh, make coffee a very uh, potent antioxidant and why sometimes you, uh, there is uh, green coffee extracts and so forth. I've actually made my own green coffee tea. It's really interesting. It's, it has anti-aging effects and just uh, cell protective effects. Anyways, all those things are very interesting. As you know, I'm, I don't have a... A lot a lot of time to go deep into it uh, if I was a scientist I would probably really dedicate my time to such things but I'm not <laughs> I have a lot of other more important interests and especially right now with uh, the classes I'm doing in yoga I just I have to delve deeper there but with the acid there's improved mood and all kinds of studies cognitive function etc but i think because they do reduce the absorption absorption of fat in the cells that could be one of it another could be something to do with detoxification or removing toxic uh, waste from the tissues and so forth um definitely something to delve deeper into it might have something to do with the phenols in them of course the chlorogenic acid being the main phenol and it's in large amount um, it also has uh, flavanols anthocyanins and cocoa uh, cocoamines which i don't even know if i researched that i probably started and then i figured let me do this video but um uh, but it is something to uh, really study i will link this article i think i told you what the article is called in case i forget to link it it's called Nutritional Value of Potatoes, Vitamin, Phytonutrient, and Mineral Content by Duroy Navare. So it's D-U-R-O-Y N-A-V-A-R-R-E, Navare, Chapter 14. So that, that is on the USDA.gov website, which is very interesting, a very interesting article. And potatoes, because they're such an ancient food from Peru, Bolivia, etc. They date back, um, when they weigh, they weigh back 10,000 years ago here, it says. And um, they're interesting for sure. So my results have been a limited amount of calories, no weight gain, amazing rooted, grounded energy because fruit is more ethereal up here. Ooh. And uh, this is more physical, it's the body, it comes from the earth. I would love to grow them, I'm planning to grow some so that they come fresh. 
and I think I'll grow some fingerlings but my point is I boil a big pot and I eat whatever I want however I want it with um, Indian black salt mostly I'll link that Indian black salt because it's the best thing on earth and um, is it called Kalamanak? anyways it's sulfuric it's kind of eggy and uh, or truffle salt would be good too but something basic i like them basic and i uh, have cabbage usually i'm literally turning into you know middle-aged european uh but um it's peasant food but it's been powerful and now with the quarantine and not shopping as much it's really nice to know that a crop that can grow easily with zero issues they're very pest resistant they're, they're really you can plant 20 uh, potatoes and get you can plant 20 pounds of potatoes and get over 200 pounds of potatoes and you can plant them in hay you can cut your grass create some dry grass plant them in the, the hay and you get potatoes just like that with very little watering so they're powerful especially for times of hunger and I can understand now why they're such an important crop and that is it they have reduced my cellulite i have been um, um, really uh, without moving a lot keeping a certain weight and feeling most of all light and amazing they're 80 percent water so you feel light even if you're full for five minutes after dinner if you eat a lot of potatoes then just not long after that and they have other benefits some um, they can uh, help with um, getting enough uh, water and fiber and help with people that have constipation especially if you're coming from a less fibrous diet and of course we mentioned blood pressure etc this is just amazing but i'll link the articles if you find something interesting in those articles or if you're a scientist and you know more and you can go deeper and dig more and see what other phenols are in there and which ones are connected to uh, cellulite or what could maybe they're affecting estrogen levels maybe they're affecting testosterone levels i'm not sure but they do seem to have a good effect better than fruit effect on cellulite so that's interesting um kind of like brain expansion moment i had today and i'll talk to you soon namaste